Yo, what's going on guys? It's G Miners here, and since we are nearing the end of the season, I wanted to go through and mention five absolutely must-have weapons going into season 19. Now, this list isn't strictly going to be weapons that came out this season because some of them suck and I think that would be boring, but more so just weapons that I found myself using a ton this season, which tend to mean they are more in line with the current meta. I've done like four or five Trio Flawless raids, a Duo Flawless, and then some speedruns for both raids and GMs all this season, so this list is going to contain weapons that I used in those settings, which made the runs easier or were just too good not to use. If you guys are new or returning players, I will also be going over exactly how you yourself can get each of these weapons as easy as possible that are on the list, and I think of these, only two weapons are not craftable, so you're not going to have to mess around too much with unnecessary god roll farming, and do keep in mind this list is in no particular order. Okay, hopping straight into the list with one of the best guns which you will actually need to farm, we have Riptide. Riptide itself came out just last season, and it is a rapid fire frame fusion rifle that goes in the kinetic slot. Cartesian coordinate and null composure are two of the best fusions in the entire game, and these are both the same archetype. Best part is you can throw this in the kinetic slot as I mentioned, so you can now run a top tier fusion which has great DPS while still running a primary that synergizes with your subclass. Personally, I have a role with Compulsive Reloader and Chill Clip, which feels really good together because both perks rely on reloading often, but there are a metric ton of good rolls on this thing. In the first slot, Auto Loading Holster, Lead from Gold, Field Prep, and even Compulsive Reloader like I have are all very good options for very different reasons. And then in the second slot, Chill Clip, Frenzy, Corporal Weapon, and Demolitionist are all extremely strong as well. I do also really like Successful Warm Up, but on rapid fires, it doesn't ever feel like you really need it. The role I personally want to get my hands on is either lead from gold or field prep with chill clip. And if you guys want to get your hands on any role that you choose, all you need to do is farm this weapon in the crucible. The drop rate is actually pretty decent for the weapon, and it is definitely worth playing a bit of PvP. Second on this list is a brand new scout rifle from Season of Plunder, which is the Tarnished Metal. This is obviously going to be craftable through unlocking patterns with the seasonal content, so farming catch crash, expeditions, and purchasing red border weapon frames from the star chart in the helm is your best option. I would go as far as to say, if you can only get one weapon from this season craftable, it should be tarnished metal. Overall, it just feels like the best compared to all the other primary options. No reprieve, which is a slug shotgun, isn't anything special, which I tested in this video. And then Sales by Pitch Glass is easily beat out by Storm Chaser. Tarnished Metal does have a few good rolls that you could go for. Vault Shot is an option on this scout, but I honestly don't think it's a good option for the way that scouts play in endgame PvE, so the god roll in my opinion is good old Rapid Hit and Explosive Payload. All scouts in the game, other than maybe high impacts, currently feel super solid. Tarnished Metal is going to be a lightweight, so it has increased handling and then also movement speed while it's equipped, and then everything else about the weapon feels super balanced. If I need an energy scout rifle for Lightfall, this is going to be at the top of my list to run. Third up on this list, which is my personal favorite weapon in all of Destiny right now, is Unforgiven. I made an entire video about how most of the community sleeps on this weapon, and it's completely true. Way too many people got a roll with just one reload speed and saw that it was a 750 RPM and immediately wrote it off. But there is one roll that exists, which makes it beat out all other weapons, in my opinion. The roll that you are going to want is Demolitionist and Frenzy. On top of this, having a mag like Light Mag or even Flared Magwell to increase reload speed helps, or having high caliber rounds to flinch enemies helps out too. I managed to get all of this and a reload speed masterwork on mine, so I kind of lucked out, but either way, having around 20 reload speed plus the 50 from Frenzy makes this thing feel super snappy. Frenzy in endgame content is great because it gives you a nearly unlimited 15% damage boost, 50 handling, and then 50 reload speed, and Demolitionist helps you bypass reloads and then also gives grenade energy, making it great for most endgame grenade-based builds. I ended up using this in both Duo Flawless Vault of Glass against Templar, and even in our one phase roll kill in the Vow of the Disciple speedruns that we were doing on stream. This SMG does have some other solid perk options like Adrenaline Junkie and Golden Tricorn, but if you are serious about a roll for endgame content, rather than just playing around and having fun, I think Frenzy always takes the cake. 
Weapon number four on the list is something that if you don't have for some reason, you need it. This is probably the most important weapon to have in my opinion, which is forbearance. This arc waveframe grenade launcher is available from the Vow of the Disciple raid, where you can either grab yourself a god roll from an encounter, buy one from the final chest, or craft one after you get five red borders. The only role that you should have on this weapon is going to be Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction. If you do manage to craft one yourself, which you absolutely should, also make sure to have a Reload Speed Masterwork, Quick Launch for Handling and Velocity, and then High Velocity Rounds for Increased Reload Speed. This gets your reload all the way up to 96, which is what you want, because that will be the only negative about this weapon. So now with High Reload Speed, you can just spam this at the ground and watch everything melt in front of you. The list of places I've used this is honestly way too long, but it includes things like most of the Trio Flawless raids I've done, Duo Flawless VOG and DSC, Val speedruns, GM speedruns, and I even took this thing into King's Fall on day one. This weapon is a gift from Bungie, so make sure you have it. Before we get onto the final weapon, as a quick honorable mention, Taipan is another weapon that I think everybody should get the god roll for. If you don't have this craftable already, it only takes two red borders, which are given to you from a quest at the Enclave, I believe. Double check that, but anyway, the god roll is going to be triple tap and firing line with enhanced battery and boss spec on the weapon. Super, super easy to get, and you can easily hop into Destiny tomorrow and have one of the best damaging heavy weapons in the entire game. Last but not least on the list is going to be a King's Fall weapon, which is actually Smite of Moraine. Now, I already know in the comments, most people are going to start arguing that Zali's Bane or Doom of Chalchis are better options for endgame content like day one raids, SMGs are king, and then pulses are second to that. Hand cannons right now are going to be borderline useless compared to many alternatives. Scouts are actually super solid, but I still feel like pulses beat them out. GMs are a bit of a different story, but I would still say pulses are great here, which is why Smite a Moraine is something you want. This pulse actually has some pretty solid rolls, but the one I like the most is Demolitionist and Firefly. This gives great ad clear, reload speed, grenade energy on kill, and pulses in harder content still flinch the hell out of red bars, which is why they are so good. I do also think that stats for all and one for all could be an even better combo, depending on the spawn rate of adds in the activity you're playing, so this will be another perk combination that I likely take into the next day one raid race. If you guys do want this, it can be rewarded from encounters and chests in the King's Fall raid, or purchased from the final chest for spoils and eventually crafted after five red borders are earned. Overall, if you still need a kinetic pulse rifle or you just want a better one to run, this is one of the best options in the game right now. This is my list of five weapons to absolutely have for season 19, and most of these also carry over to season 20 as well, so make sure if you guys don't get them by the end of November to keep farming until Lightfall is released. Let me know if you guys do have any questions in the comments below, and do keep in mind that the roles I chose work in endgame PvE, specifically with day one raids and low mans in mind. I'm sure other weapons feel better if you run easier content, but I wanted this list to be viable for everything in the game. Anyways, that's all for this video, guys. As always, have a good one. Peace.